Hey, welcome back everyone. Today I'm in my shop. I've got some PVMs still on my bench that I'm working on restoring. Uh, my last video I did about restoring a PVM I did for uh, 1351Q. I've got a second 1351Q I'm in the middle of working on right now. So this is your main chassis or A board for the Sony PVMs. And again, this is going to look similar on any of these PVMs uh, that are 14 inches. So I've been developing a capacitor kit for these monitors, uh, specifically this one. I think I've got it pretty well perfected. These capacitors we're changing today are actually affecting our geometry specifically. You know, most of the screen problems you have on your PVM will be from these capacitors, like 95% of them. But let's take a closer look at the board and get set up for the capacitor replacement. The first thing when you look at this you should notice right away is the number of capacitors. And these are all mostly electrolytic on this board and that's the way it will be for most of these 90s and early 2000 model PVMs. You could go crazy. I've done it before and actually changed every single capacitor on this board but that's a lot of work to recap an entire PVM board. Here's an example of just a nightmare area on this board to recap. Look at all these tiny capacitors. You're talking about probably 30 to 40 just in this area alone and a lot of these are going to not even control things that are uh, screen related for geometry at all and another thing i want you to notice really close in is how many tiny board components there are in here that could easily become damaged if you're not careful enough or if something happens in between changing out so many capacitors that are clustered together like this so what can we really do because it's going to be a huge waste of time to change every single capacitor on here the capacitors that are going to be tending to fail are the ones that are in some of the hottest areas on the board. Sony, uh, of course, used high quality components. There weren't any cheap capacitors that they were using. That simply means that we don't have to worry about a lot of these other capacitors that um, are not stressed and still have, you know, relatively uh, a lot of life on them. They aren't exposed to a high amount of heat either. That high temperature area is from this shielding all the way back over here. And then the really high temperature areas are going to be around specifically these uh, voltage regulators and where this uh, heat sinks are on some of these chips. And those are the capacitors that we really need to look at today because these are directly in line with our screen processing. I'm replacing this cluster of four capacitors here, you know, these here, all these in this area. These are all related to our screen control specifically. Anything along these lines. And uh, they're all part of this cap kit that I've developed. There's a couple of capacitors down here next to this chip that need to be replaced. But let me show you the back side of this board. Here's the underside of the chassis and you can see all the other smaller uh, components. We've got resistors and and capacitors and all kinds of little things in here that can you know be damaged when we're trying to remove the capacitors not a whole lot of space you got to be very careful when you're working on a double-sided board like this on this board you've got barely any room and it's really easy to hit something that could severely damage the PVM as I said before I've been working on this cap kit for this monitor and I will have a few other ones uh, coming soon and if you do buy a cap kit You'll want to uh, first start off by taking your list of listed capacitors where you need to change on your board and you go through and you just kind of, I like to mark them with a sharpie so I know which ones that I'm taking out and I know which ones need to be changed. Now uh, we've got the soldering iron heated up. We're going to reflow the solder on these capacitors. That way when I hit it with that HACO uh, so desoldering gun, they'll come right out.
This is the main cluster area where our capacitors used to be. Before I put my new capacitors in, I'm going through and inspecting these pads, and then I'll also uh, put some rubbing alcohol on them with a Q-tip to clean off these areas, all these areas where these caps were, and then I'll insert the new through-hole capacitors from the cap kit and just resolder them into place. I'm finishing up on my final capacitors. I've got two more to go. So I figured I'd just let you see a little bit of how I replace a capacitor. Again, it's already gone from the hole. So generally what I want to do generally what I want to do is come in here I'm going to trim one of the legs down and get that leg off and then I'll just tack it then I'll trim the second leg solder that right into place there solder the original first leg put some heat on it down to the final capacitor here and just remember on a capacitor usually the longer leg is the positive side and then the white side is the negative side with the white line on the outside of the capacitor just so make sure you always line those up even if you have to go back after you do the work if you're concerned double check double check your work and make sure you didn't put one in backwards got our new capacitors all soldered into place the next thing I'm going to do is I always want to make sure I've done everything correctly so I'm going to go through and quality check make sure that I put the right caps in each spot make sure that I didn't make any mistakes and then after that I'm going to have to clean again I'm going to clean again on the spots where I used that flux with some alcohol and get all that tidied up and we'll come back and take one last look at this board so here's the finished board. All the caps have been replaced. I double checked everything. It's all clean. No more flux. And our new capacitors over here, they're definitely a lot smaller than the older ones. But the last thing to do is I'm going to put the old shell, you know, sleeve on the on the board and then we'll slip it into the monitor frame and we'll go ahead and test it and make sure it works and then it'll be ready to calibrate for perfect geometry. I wanted to go ahead and reinstall it here for you. You'll notice that there's a lot of things already out of here. Uh, all the other boards except for the neck board back here, all the other boards are out of the way. And then the first thing I need to do is slip my chassis kind of back in there. There's a little bit of a tray and that's how it just does. It just slides on and off that very nicely. And before I send it all the way back, I'm going to set it about the halfway point and then I'm going to start reconnecting uh, my connections. Now there's a lot of connections. Most of these actually uh, can only fit in one spot or if they are similar then they'll have color coordinated connectors that will match the chassis. There's a black connection and then a white connection and the red connection. So now I'm just going to slip my chassis a little bit further forward and connect these. This is on the other side next to the flyback. You've got a connector that's going to go from your neck board right over here down to next to the flyback. And then you've got your yoke assembly to plug in up here towards the front. The only thing left is to reinsert our anode cap. Slip on this ring, clip into place, use your suction cup, just push it down and get some of the air out of there so it's nice and coupled and sucked onto the back of the glass. Snap the cable back into place. Now it's time to hook this video board back up just like the other times or the other boards that we just got done reconnecting. And they'll just slip down in there We'll reattach these ground positions and then this will go into the power supply board and we'll hook that in next. The very last thing I'm going to be reinserting is my power supply unit where you need to connect your PSU because it's pretty obvious that this big plug goes right here and then you'll get a, or another connector that's only got two, a black and a white. So just make sure that the black is on the center if you can't remember and then the white is on the outside. Black center, white outside and the top connector. This right here is where our power will come in from our plug. Just connect that right down there and then one more spot up top that needs to be connected. And we'll slide this on the metal frame, line up the screw holes and I'll put the screws in to secure it in place. It's time to give it a power test. 
and we have a screen power and we have our menu and everything so it appears that we did the job good and nothing's nothing's messed up so what I like to let this thing do now is just warm up for a little bit and then I'll get into the sub menu and recalibrate it well folks there you have it another PVM has been saved and is ready for another 20 years of fun and uh, use probably longer than that because the tube is in great condition if someone just uses it sparingly for retro gaming it could last practically another 30 40 years hey thanks again for watching please leave me a thumbs up if you like this video also let me know what you think with a comment or if you have any questions please feel free to leave it below i'm steve and have a wonderful day